Oh, there's dolphins out there. Just came up. There you go. We love it here because it's right on the water. And our boat is right over there. And it's very, very convenient. There's a lot of tax advantages to living here. <laughs> After I got out of the rock and roll thing with Play-Doh Funky Music, I, I was just, I was retired at like 40 years old. I was, you know, I just could stop. You know what, they always say that one song doesn't make a, a, a career, but in the case of that song, it was, it's still so big. Clubs were closing down, and discos were opening up. So that's one night in the dressing room. I told them, I said, "Look, I said I'm having problems more and more all the time." I said, "Booking us," and I said, "We either have to do more of this to dance stuff, or we're, I'm not going to be able to book us." And um, the drummer spoke up, and there had been some black people coming to the nightclubs that we had to the disco that we had played. This particular disco, actually. And um, said, a white boy's going to play some funky music. And, you know, we, they were just kidding us, you know. So the drummer, Barani, spoke up and he said, well, it's like those people keep saying, play that funky music, white boy. I said, well, yeah, you know. I said, but, you know, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, they were dancing and singing and moving to the moving. And just when it hit me, somebody turned around and shouted, play that funky music, white boy. I tried to find a, a way that we could just fit in, you know, with what was going on. A way to, to you know, cross both, you know, rock and disco. And um, for me, it was just what was going on with us. I mean, I just wrote down word for word what, what, what we were going through. I took it around to every record label, that I, and I got close, but no deal. Because everybody was worried about that white boy thing, this and that, and this and that. Even my father, when I took it to um, his home to play it for him for the first time, he took the needle off of the record. He said, oh, no, you can't do that. I said, what? I already did it. He said, you can't say that. You've got to take that out. You have? I said, no, if I take it out, it's going to kill the record. I said, that's the song. The song was hitting so fast that maybe four or five weeks into it, it was like diving toward number one. It just came out and started boom. We got two Grammy nominations, won an American Music Award. We played live on the Grammys. And the night we played live, I, my, my, my parents that took them out to LA. And um, so my dad is looking around. He's Ringo Starr's over here. Steve Allen's over there, Henry Mancini's over here, Beach Boys are over there, and there's my dad and my mom. And my dad, he said, man, he said, look at this. I said, well, yeah, this is the Grammys, what do you want? 
He said, remember when I told you you should take White Boy out of that record? I said, yeah. He said, I am so glad you didn't listen to me. I said, well, I, you know, I knew it, but the record was dead without it, you know. Bye. 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 Bye.